Mm. Let me tell you, hair loss, dandruff, and just dry, itchy scalp ain't it. Oh, my precious hair. Ugh. And you've probably tried every type of hair loss, dandruff shampoo or treatment there is only to kind of ask, is this even working? Like I'm still losing so much hair and I have dry flaky scalp. So fear not friends, today we're going to get to the root of the problem, pun intended. Okay, let me just put this down. And I actually reached out and, oh God. And I reached out to a celebrity hairstylist. Her name is Helen and she's a trichologist, which is basically an expert of the hair and the scalp to tell us what is wrong. So today, get ready to say goodbye to itchy dry scalp forever. Hi guys, so I am here with Helen and we are downtown and I'm so excited for you to share with everyone all the hair and scalp tips that we need to know. This is where the magic happens, no, I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, this is where we do all our product development, we have our meetings, we have our press events and also something that I'm going to try on you later, which is our scalp camera yeah. to show you your scalp up close. <laughs> that is actually what I'm most concerned with because let me tell you, my scalp goes through some stuff, so I need professional advice. You're going to love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's go over to that and explore all about the products and our hair and scalp. Let's do it. <laughs> so why is scalp health so important? everything begins at the roots. If we aren't cleansing our scalp properly, taking care of our scalp, whether that is taking vitamins within or taking care of it topically to ensure um, the scalp is balanced, the microbiome is balanced, and the end goal is to get your scalp to homeostasis so that the hair has the best environment to grow. The chair. Are you ready for this, Felicia? Yes. I am not, but no. yes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And so we're gonna go directly into the root area here so I can show you. Oh, we can see already you just have a little bit of a scratch here. Is that a pimple? Um, it's, you might have scratched your scalp. Do you find your scalp itchy at all? It's like dry itchy and yes. then it gets oily really quickly yes. in between washes. This is kind of like that dry itchy, but you've this is what can happen with just scratching your scalp. I see. So my scalp is really greasy, but it gets dry and itchy sometimes, especially when it's cold. So when you describe that as it gets oily very easily, but it's dry and itchy. Yeah. So that really sounds like something is stripping your scalp in your product. And this is why it's very important to understand what products you're using, what's in your products. So if there's any kind of like sulfate in your product, it's gonna strip that scalp. Okay. And um, if there's other kind of like ingredients in it that are like astringents, they're gonna just remove that natural oil mm -hmm. and really kind of like make the scalp then, do you know when you put like oil on certain parts of your body or on your lips sometimes it makes it worse because your body goes into overdrive yes. to kind of protect it and yes. then it starts producing more oil. I do use some dandruff shampoos that have a little bit of salicylic acid as well okay and I'm not sure is it so you don't have dandruff huh and that's probably why your scalp is being stripped right now because it doesn't need the salicylic acid wow so you could use salicylic acid in like a not drug claim, so it has a less percentage. Mm -hmm. So something like our Scalp Renew, mm -hmm. which is a lower level in it, just enough to like, just exfoliate the scalp lightly. Yeah. But when you go to that 2% and above, which is a, like when you can claim the anti-dandruff yeah. and it's an over-the-counter product, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like a lot stronger ah. because it's needed for those antifungal properties, but you do not have any dandruff. You actually just have stripped your scalp and that's why you're getting the inflammation and the little dry flakes. So the number one thing that you can do to take care of your scalp is to ensure that you're cleansing properly. So when you cleanse your hair, ensuring that you're using the product correctly, you're rinsing out properly, keeping the scalp clean, especially if you have various different scalp conditions or hair loss, so that the hair has a proper environment blood flow to the hair follicle and the healthy place to grow. So is there a difference between when people say itchy scalp versus dandruff? Are they synonymous or are they different? They can be synonymous, but it can also just be like you have an area just around here, which yeah. has a little bit more. 
Now there are many reasons why it can happen around here as well, okay? So yeah. this looks like a little bit of seborrheic dermatitis, again, not dandruff. Uh -huh. And the reason why I say that is it's more, this is a reaction maybe to like heavy fragrances, uh -huh. or it can also be a reaction from uh, not rinsing the product out properly. Mm. And also because our shower head just beats on this area. Yeah and it's causing inflammation, pressure to this area. But when we shampoo our hair, okay, we focus on this area a lot, Yes. and this area gets missed. So that's why we see a lot of this irritation around mm -hmm. here. But again, this isn't dandruff, which is good to know. Mm. But what you can do is just spot treat this area. Okay. Um, exfoliate that. Yeah. Same way as you can spot treat your skin. Mm -hmm. Like I like to apply the same rules to your scalp as you do to your skin because it is an extension of your face yeah as you were saying that i was like this is what we say for over exfoliating with chemical exfoliants on our face you get irritation exactly so i can see like this is mainly all around this area here yeah and with dandruff dandruff is poor circulation and also like a bacteria growth in the scalp and it gets worse when we produce more oil because it feeds off the lipids in our oil mm. so when we sweat or work out or just natural sebum yeah the dandruff gets worse okay but it's usually like layers and layers of skin because it the circulation is poor mm. so that's when you see it build up on the scalp what are the signs of a healthy scalp versus well, let's go to the top because you have a very healthy scalp on top. <laughs> As you can see here, do you see this like nice silvery kind of gloss to the scalp here? Mm -hmm. And then around the hair follicle. So in around here, this looks very clean. Mm. If this is a sign of a bad scalp, you'll see redness, you'll see a little bit of yellow, which is the sebum, mm -hmm. mixed with you know your dead skin. So mm. it looks like there's a buildup around the hair follicle and it's very clear. Mm. So how we can tell when it's a healthy scalp without the camera is first off, you will have that natural shine in your hair. Mm -hmm. And it really is, you have good hair days more often when you have good scalp, okay? <laughs> now when there's an unhealthy scalp, you will find that the hair looks oily faster. Yeah. Um, that, you know, it's a bit dull looking. It's not performing the way you want it to perform. You mm -hmm. have more bad hair days. Oh, so it really does start from the root, right? Like the performance Everything of Everything begins at the root. It's like, you know, if you want your makeup to look good on your face, mm -hmm. it has to start with healthy skin first. Mm. And really for hair growth, the hair follicle needs the nutrients to grow. Mm -hmm. And we get these nutrients fed to the hair follicle by good circulation through gentle massage, but also by the scalp being clean mm -hmm. and the ingredients able to actually nourish the scalp along with, you know, what you put in your body. We mm. need the minerals, the nutrients, everything in this combination together as well to equals healthy scalp for healthy, healthy hair. hair. So what are the things that you see most people doing wrong that's actually causing concern? So using products like anti-dandruff products whenever they don't actually have dandruff. So uh -huh. it's figuring out what your scalp is. Various different things like if you have dandruff, not cleansing your hair often enough. Oh, okay, so yes. that's another question. People always love to say, it's better to cleanse your hair every three days because you're not keeping yes. the natural oils mm -hmm. versus if I don't cleanse my hair in three days, it will wreak havoc. Completely. If you have a healthy scalp, absolutely, you can go for two to three days. Yeah. But I also say you need to add a scalp treatment in as maintenance. Mm -hmm. Similar to if you left your skin for three days without cleansing it, you'd want to do your full beauty routine then, wouldn't you? This is true. Yes. When you have dandruff or other scalp issues, the lipids are what feeds the yeast and the bacteria that mm -hmm. are in these scalp conditions. So the longer you leave your hair, the more a, the bacteria is able to grow. So actually, you should be cleansing your hair twice a day if your dandruff is really bad until it goes away. But okay. with a very gentle cleanser that you're not stripping it, or with something that has the salicylic acid in it to help because it has antimicrobial, antibacteria kind of uh, properties to it. The most exciting thing about the hair and scalp care industry is that less is more. When you're taking care of your scalp, you will find that you have more good hair days, you need to use less product, scalp is balanced, and you just get more out of your hair. So let's say people are scratching their head because it's itchy, whether it's just from irritation or dandruff. So what's the best way to go about like subsiding that itch? Well, obviously the best way would be to not itch at all, but I understand that you know, it's really difficult to do that. It's like a mosquito bite that know. people tell you not to scratch. It really like, is. Eh. But we could see even under the scalp camera how irritating that is to the scalp yeah. and creates that inflammation. Yeah. Um, so what I would advise is try not to use the fingernails. 
if you need to just press on the yeah. scalp there to get rid of the itch because <laughs> also you're creating bacteria underneath your fingernails as yeah. well it's also with the hair brush when you brush it down drop it's like you need to clean that brush every day because that actually could be making it worse change your pillowcase mm. all these different things it's like how, if you had something that you could visibly see on your face it like would be easier to understand mm -hmm. you know and follow these rules but mm -hmm. with your scalp because we can't see it it's much more difficult gentle approach gentle approach <laughs> but first off try not yes to. <laughs> so there you have it some expert tips from helen herself on how to manage dry irritated and dandruff prone scalp so stay tuned because this is only part one of our two episode series with helen where helen's going to continue sharing her tips on what we should be doing in the shower so how are we washing our hair how should we be shampooing what type of product should we be looking out for to get the best hair and scalp that we can hope to see you guys all in the next video and subscribe if you haven't share some love and thank you everyone for watching beauty within bye